I'm sure that a lot of you have been there before, you have some old car audio gear, and it's a total bummer to just have it sitting on the shelf collecting dust. So how can we repurpose it and use our car audio gear for some shop tunes and make our own stereo? In this video, I'll be building this using some gear I pulled out of an old build. This has component speakers, allows me to connect amplifiers for testing, and has a touchscreen head unit in the middle that I can use for playing CDs, Spotify, and more. How do we build this? How do we wire it to be powered off a wall outlet? And will it even sound half decent? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Without further ado, Let's begin. To kick this project off, I have a wide variety of a couple different items. I of course have an old set of speakers, in this case, a component set of speakers. And I actually am planning on making this box so that I can swap the speakers out more on this later. But then I also have my old head unit here. This is just a double din pioneer head unit. I of course have the wiring harness so we can do our wiring. I've got some terminal strips. This will allow us to easily connect our wiring in more of a temporary manner so that if I did want to reinstall this into a car someday or reuse it on another project, we're not burning through a bunch of the connections here by soldering them. I also have an AC adapter which converts AC power to 12 volt DC which is what this head unit needs and then I've got some various connections because I'm making mine not only into a boom box but something that I can use to test different aftermarket amplifiers and to send speaker level out of those aftermarket amplifiers into these speakers as well so I'm doing that a little bit different you might not necessarily need these you'll see further in the project. And then of course, the thing I always stress on this channel, every good project begins with a good plan. So in this case, here's the plan you can see here. I hid the speaker mounting baffle on this side just so I could take some measurements here on the drawing. But the plan is three different chambers, one chamber for each of the different speakers on left and right, and then one chamber in the middle that will actually have an open back so that I can adjust things in the back and rewire as needed. And then the head unit will mount in the middle here as well. I've got the dimensions I need. Time to start cutting some MDF wood. So on this project, in order to make my cuts, I'm using my table saw, but I understand a lot of people out there don't have a table saw, so not to worry. I've made some videos in the past that go into detail on how to get really accurate cuts using something like a hand circular saw or even a jigsaw. I'll put a link to that up in the corner of the screen. In total, I had 10 different boards that I needed to cut, so I've got them all laid out here, and now I can start doing the layout work for some of our cutout holes for the speakers and for the head unit. In order to make my cuts perfectly straight, I'll be following up with a router, so right now I'm only using the jigsaw to do what's called rough cutting. Now if you don't have a router, you could obviously use the jigsaw here to make sure that you carefully cut exactly on the line, but in my case I'm just leaving a little bit of extra material. The router process involves using this double-sided sticky tape in order to stick my template that I've previously made to my current workpiece, and then over on the router I'm going to use this bit called a flush trim bit to perfectly copy that profile to my new piece. I repeat this router process several times during the project and the reason I like to do this as opposed to just using a jigsaw is it gives me much more clean and straight lines and I don't have to do any follow up work like going in and sanding a curve or a line to make it perfect. It's perfect as soon as I'm done with the router process. A quick test fit here on the head unit itself and it looks like that is good to go. So now I can finish up with getting these other two little holes cut that I'm using for switches and RCA connections. And since I'm gonna have two layers on the front of the box here, I can copy those holes using the flush trim bit to a second piece of wood. I am loving this layout so far. I think this is gonna look super cool with the speakers. 
It's gonna have a nice kind of design aesthetic going on. Now that is the majority of the more detailed woodworking to actually get all these perfect sizes for everything. I do need to do a couple of finishing touches on the woodworking here. The first of which is I'm going to use this roundover bit to add a little roundover to this outside groove. It will just make it look a little bit more pleasing than having this hard edge. And then on the inside here around the head unit, I'm also going to add a large chamfer using the router. As far as these two holes go, I don't have to do anything on those because these are just gonna have cover plates over it that kind of look like that. I wanted to add a much larger round over to the radio cutout, so I took the two panels and permanently attached them to each other using some CA glue. I then loaded up a large three quarter inch round over bit and then made that inside pass. Using the two different roundovers really softens up that edge and gives it a nice look. I'm curious to see how it's going to look though once we do the coating. So I've now got the front panel completely made here and we are ready to start assembling the wood. But really quick before I do that, I do want to take care of a little bit of a detail work here on the back side of the panel because my head unit is actually going to mount in from behind like so. I wanna take care of mounting my threaded inserts on the back side of the panel before I do the rest of the assembly just because it's easier to do so now. First, I use a transfer punch to transfer the exact center location of each mounting hole. These are the special threaded inserts that I'm using. I'll put a link to these and all the other tools and materials down in the video description. I want to make sure that I don't drill too far through this piece of wood and have a hole on the other side, so I'm using a little bit of tape to mark the drill bit. It's little things like this that you wanna be careful with and take your time planning while doing a build. Don't rush through things and make more problems for yourself. After adding a little dab of CA glue, which will help to permanently hold these in their spot, I can screw them on in. So now that I've mounted those threaded inserts, I can use machine screws to hold the head unit in rather than using wood screws that could degrade over time. And that way, if I ever need to swap the head unit in and out, it's not like it's gonna degrade the quality of the hole. And you can see that it holds onto the head unit perfectly. So now I'm gonna disassemble the head unit, of course, and we can finish our woodwork assembly. Guys, I am stoked. Look at this. It looks super sick. I'm definitely excited to see how this one's going to turn out. Now, this still has some hard corners that I want to soften up. So much like I did around the inside here, now that this is fully assembled, I can do this quarter inch round over to all of the corners. Let's go ahead and get that done. After I was done sanding, I did spray a coat of this flat black paint. And I did that to paint around these areas that are gonna be hard to get to with my roll-on material that I'm using next. The material I'm using to cover the rest of the enclosure is this, this is called Duratex. This is a roll-on type coating that is pretty much explicitly designed for speaker enclosures. I'll be using this special foam roller to roll it on that leaves a texture in the paint. And then I also have a paintbrush just to kind of get it into some of these tighter corners. My plan is to not really apply it to this surface, but to apply it as much as I can around the edge here. What I really like about this coating is I can apply it super quickly. It really lays on fast and it's really actually pretty easy to do. I just have to make sure if there's any areas where I did use masking tape like this, I have to make sure I remove it before the product is fully dried. So check it out guys, we now have the enclosure here completely coated. I even coated the backside here. And again, I'm doing my setup a little bit different than you might wanna make a boom box if you were doing this kind of thing. And that's because I wanna have access to all the wiring to be able to switch up my configuration as need be. In reference to switching up the configuration, I have these plates made on the laser. I have a quarter inch black acrylic plate on bottom and then an eighth inch acrylic plate on top for a cool little trim accent. And what's going to be neat about these is I designed these in a way that if I do wanna swap out the speakers and test different speakers in the future, 
I can easily do so just by switching this plate. But if you were just going to use this for a shop stereo and you were gonna keep the same set of speakers in them, you could just use a jigsaw on a piece of wood, cut out the hole and mount them using some wood screws like you would normally. I'm going to position these plates in here and transfer those mounting hole locations. And then much like I did on the back of this to mount the head unit, I'm going to use threaded inserts so that I can take these on and off multiple times without the degraded quality like a wood screw would give you. Once those threaded inserts are added, I also added this right here. This is an acoustic foam that will give me a nice seal between the speaker baffle and the cabinet. That way we don't have any air leaks. Now before I can get the baffles mounted up, I do need to tap these holes. If you're unfamiliar with what that means, basically I'm going to be adding threads to the acrylic holes so I can use machine fasteners to hold this speaker in as well. Remember that I have links to the tools and materials used in this video down in the video description. I'm using these speaker terminals here to get the wired connection inside of the enclosure, so I need to drill a hole for each one and then thread them into place. These terminals came with these connections here that I add the speaker wire to by soldering. Now for this build, the speaker wire that I'm using here is from our show sponsor, New Concepts, and I'd like to take a second to thank them. New Concepts has a wide variety of power wire, speaker wire, RCAs, and power distribution pieces that make a car audio install very simple. I personally really like their line of basic fuse blocks as they are small and easy to configure and very budget friendly for a complex install with multiple amplifiers and they can be easily chained together. To learn more about New Concepts, be sure to check out the link down in the video description. As far as the connections go for the speakers, I did run two different runs. That way, if I wanna do an active setup where I'm amplifying a woofer and a tweeter both individually, I can do so. But for the time being where I'm just kinda of using this as a boom box, I'm just going to include these crossovers that came with the component set on the inside here. So I'll only be connecting this wire to the crossover for the time being and then the crossover will have its two connections going out to the woofer and the tweeter. Check that out. I love how glossy this black acrylic is. It really gives it a high-end kind of like piano black look. This is going to look awesome. Check it out, my friends. This is looking super cool. Really like that orange accent around the gloss black acrylic. I'm excited to hear how this thing sounds and get it wired up, which is the next step. We need to get this connected to our electrical power supply along with making the speaker connections. The hardest part here is picking out the AC-DC adapter. What you wanna do is you wanna look for an AC-DC adapter that gives you a 12 volt output and you wanna match the current output to the current requirement for the head unit. The other complex thing that is hard to find that I recommend is that you get one that comes with one of these special plugs here. And with this plug, it allows me to plug into this normal AC DC adapter style plug, but it also allows me to connect wires. Again, I'll put the link down in the video description. Let me get everything put together and then I'll walk you through it. So first of all, this single wire harness here on the back of the head unit, that has all these connections here. And it looks like a lot, but it's really not that difficult. First off, there's the black wire here that's just connected to the negative for the power supply. And then there is a constant lead, which is the yellow, which is connected to the positive side of the power supply. That yellow wire also runs over to here, which is a switch. And that allows me to tell this head unit when to turn on and off. When I activate the switch, it allows the power to go through this red wire, which then goes back to the head unit and tells it to turn on. Now the head unit also has a blue wire, which is connected here, and that's just the head unit telling the amplifier to turn on. So that blue wire goes to this switch here. That way I can activate it when I want it to. And then it then goes out on a port on the front of the panel that I'll show you in a second. These eight connections here are very simple. These are just the speaker wire outputs out of the head unit. And in this case, I just have four wires connected, which I can then plug into in order to send the speaker wire signal 
to my speakers. The only other thing on the back of the head unit that I'm doing a little bit differently, I want to have a signal output out of the head unit that I can send to amplifiers to test them. So I'll be connecting these RCA wires to the back side of the panel here. The only other kind of odd thing that I did is I want the option to connect to a car battery. So with these here, these would provide a 12 volt constant source to our system as well as the ground to our system. And whenever I'm using a car battery, I would just completely disconnect the 12 volt AC DC adapter. Here's these switches I was referring to on the front side of the panel. You can see that I laser etched them to say main power. This is my amplifier power out along with my amp power switch. And then I have my RCA connections for the front, the rear, and the sub. And again, this is something that I just added so that this would be a little bit more functional for my purposes so I can do some testing here on the channel. You would not need this if you were just making this into a stereo. All right, my friends, the moment of truth is here. I've plugged in the AC-DC adapter, and now it's time to turn on the main power switch and see if we get power on, which we do. Good deal. I've plugged in a USB, which will allow me to play some royalty-free music here so we can do a little bit of a listening test. I am super impressed my friends. Definitely fills up the shop with plenty of sound. It sounds good and it's only on head unit power. And what is cool is in the future, I can hook up amplifiers to amplify these speakers. Let's talk a little bit about that. Here's what it looks like when I wanna set this up configured to be able to test an amplifier. I've completely disconnected the AC adapter here and instead I'm using a 12 volt battery. You'll see that there's two positive and two negative leads. One of the set of leads goes to my system here in order to power up the head unit and then the other set of leads goes to my amplifier. But what's awesome is I can plug into the front here and I can get the RCA low level signal to send to the amplifier. I can also get the 12 volt turn on lead to turn on my amplifier individually. And then I can test something like a subwoofer in this case, since this is a subwoofer amplifier, or I could connect the speaker wires to go back into these speakers here, I could disconnect them quickly from the head unit power and power them off an amplifier instead. Now I do have another two channels of output on the head unit that I could use for other speakers, but I'm thinking about actually making an additional subwoofer box that's about the same size and sits below this. That way I could have a sub playing in the shop as well. Let me know if that's something that you guys would like to see. And you guys should know that the next thing that I'm planning on doing here on the channel is an entry level subwoofer box build. We're gonna build a ported box for a 12 inch subwoofer and we're gonna pair it up with an amplifier and do a test and review. So I hope to see you guys in those upcoming videos. If you wanna check out some of my past videos, you can do so here on screen. A special thanks to New Concepts. Check them out at the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Lani Ali, William Marcos, Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all of them for making this video possible and to you for watching.